Hey guys, today I wanted to answer a question that I see asked a lot. If you own a ferret, can you own other species of animals? The simplest answer, yes. We own 12 other pets, and if you group the birds all as the same species, which they're not, birds are all different species, um, each different type of bird, but we'll pretend they're all the same species just for ease of explaining. We own four different types of pets because we have the one cat, two dogs, the four ferrets, and then the five parrots. Now, the reason this question gets asked a lot is because ferrets are considered predatory animals. For simplest versions, you have two main types of pet animals. You have predators and you have prey animals. Predators, simply put, eat other animals for food and prey animals are the animals that get eaten for food. So the concern that people usually have is if you keep a ferret who is a predatory animal and you keep a prey animal, so our birds for instance are a prey animal or a lot of people want a rabbit or a guinea pig, hamster, mice, rats, those are all considered prey animals. All of those are animals, <laughs> that's my hair you were eating, um, all of those are animals who would get eaten by predators for food. Now, you can keep multiple species in a household like that, you just have to take precautions. I have my little predator here, Mr. Hokey Pokey, and my big giant prey on my shoulder here. Now, even though Poncho is significantly larger than Hokey, I guarantee you Hokey can actually be very dangerous. Ferrets have very, very sharp little teeth, which I don't know if my camera will pick up. All right, so they got those little fangs. So they got very sharp teeth that predators need for catching and killing their prey. They're very fast and they also have little claws for catching their prey. So, now I have Hokey out because Hokey of the four ferrets is the most laid back. He doesn't mind chilling here and for the most part, he, he just doesn't usually pretty much care. And it's not to say I trust him. If I didn't have control of him in my hands, I would not trust these two alone. We take a lot of precautions to have a household of 12 pets, some being predators and some being prey. And I just kind of wanted to go over some of those precautions that we take. So if you wanted to have ferrets, predatory animals, along with some prey animals. So if you wanted a bunny rabbit or something else, just some ideas on how you can safely have both. All right. So my first advice is separation. The more separate you can have your predator and preys, the safer it'll be for them. So I'm kind of going to give you a little tour of kind of where we keep our different animals. And I'm actually going to put Hokey Pokey back in his cage just because it'll be easier to deal with both of them and kind of show you around. Okay, Hokey Pokey is safe in his cage. So, the ferrets actually reside in our master bedroom with us. So their cage is in here. Hi guys. <laughs> and they stay in here away from the birds. The master bedroom is rather roomy. I believe it is like 14 by 12 foot, as well as the master bathroom that they have access to, which I actually have the dogs away because they were getting whiny and needy. But they have this whole entire room for free roaming when they are out. So this is kind of their space. Now, because this is the ferret space, normally speaking, the birds are not allowed in here. Now, if the birds are in here, the ferrets are, usually are in their cage. Having Hokey out like that was just kind of a one-time thing I did just for the video. And again, he was in complete control in my arms. Normally speaking, if the birds happen to be in here with us, ferrets stay in their cage. Now, if you were to keep a prey-type animal in here and you wanted your ferrets in here, it's not to say it's completely impossible. If we had rabbits or something, we could possibly keep them in here. Obviously, we couldn't keep them loose and free roam at the same time. You would just have to be very careful on where you kept them. Now, because we let the ferrets free roam, if the ferrets are free roaming, I already know where my ferrets can go. They're very crafty and very nimble and can kind of get everywhere. So I already know that they can get on my bed. And because they can climb up on my bed, 
they can get on both my husband's desk, which is right next to the bed, as well as on my desk, which is next to the bed. So I definitely could not keep any type of hamsters or rabbit cages on either of those. Because even if they're in a cage, ferrets have mildly long arms and could probably reach in there. And, and even if they couldn't reach them, you could definitely probably scare the other animals enough to that wouldn't be fair to the other animals. So if I were taking precautions, if I did have another animal in here, my safest bet would be putting them up on this high dresser here because I know the ferrets can't get up here. They've never been up here. And it's actually why I have my little childish rubber dinosaurs up here because they love rubber toys and those would not make it if they were anywhere the ferrets could get them. So that would definitely be your first step for keeping ferrets in the same room. You'd have to make sure your other prey type animal was in an area your ferrets couldn't get to when they are free roaming. Now, a lot of animals like rabbits should also have free roam time. So if the ferrets are locked up and you had a ferret, or if you had a rabbit that was out free roaming, you don't want your rabbit to get close enough to your ferret cage that your ferret could reach out and grab your rabbit. Now, it's one of the reasons that I like the Ferret Nation cage, because the Ferret Nation cage is decently high up, so I could remove just this ramp and there would be no way that a rabbit could get to the ferrets that way. Hi, cuties. Hi, cuties. You can't come out right now. I got the birdie out. Hi. You will eat the birdie. Like, no, I will not eat the birdie. Maybe we'll eat the birdie. <laughs> so, since this is the ferret's room, it's also very important when they're free roaming that they stay in the room. So we've taken precautions to keep them in here. Now, our door has a pretty decent gap underneath the door. The ferrets can get underneath there. So, we have this baby gate. Now, unfortunately, most baby gates are not ferret proof. So, we kind of had to make this ferret proof, and admittedly, it doesn't look the nicest, but for us, safety was more, oh, safety was more important than it looking nice. So, obviously, these big gigantic gaps here, the ferrets definitely could get through. So, we had to hot glue all of these plexiglass pieces to it. The little ferrets can't get out. So when they are free roaming in the bedroom, we know for sure they can't escape the bedroom and go out here where the birdies live. The gate also comes in handy for doggies. It will also keep dogs on either side if I don't want them on one side or the other. Now the dogs don't have a problem with the ferrets. If the ferrets are in here, I have no problem with the dogs being in here. They get along just fine. Now, normally speaking, if you can hear me over the rack, ruckus. My dogs don't normally have an issue with the birds. The problem with my birds is they are fully flighted. So they have all of their wing feathers, if you can kind of see. So, which means if they get spooked, they can fly, which means they're not the greatest of flyers, which means most of the time they end up on the floor. And doggies, being crazy doggies, will chase the birds, not to hurt them, but they like to play with the birdies. And they don't play, hey, you're falling. I have a falling birdie. Are you falling? Where are you going? You wanna go back on your cage? You can go back on your cage. Where are you going, are you falling? Do you wanna go back up here? You can go back on your cage. Oh boy. Here, here you go. One big birdie. Okay, so like I was saying, Selene wouldn't hurt the birds intentionally, but dogs by nature, when they play, usually will give a play bow, which is a pretty harsh forward movement. I can't hear you, anything over you, just so you know. <laughs> so when she goes to give a play bow, her harsh forward movement could potentially crush a bird. So usually speaking, if the birds are out of their cages out here, doggies go over here. Now, admittedly, Border Collie is smart, right? Are you a smart Border Collie? Are you ready? Can you hop up? Yeah, that's, that's how much it keeps the Border Collie in. But she's also a very smart Border Collie, so if I tell her sit, then you're going to stay in here, okay? You're going to wait. She will stay in there. Right, birdies? So... 
This is the birdies area. So when the birdies are out, this is their space. Ferrets. Ferrets are rarely out here. If the ferrets are free roaming out here, the birds stay in their cages. And we are out here the whole entire time. Now, most of our cages are pretty safe from ferrets because they have panels that keep them from getting up there as well as pretty decently high up. But even with that, ferrets are pretty clever. So if there was an accident, I, I just prevent accidents. If the ferrets are out here, we stay out here the entire time. Now, our last remaining species of animal who does not appear to be inside because he would be on a couch is our cat. Now, our cat doesn't normally mess with any of the animals. He's kind of a crabby old man loner. He actually has his own little section of space in our laundry room. He's got a gigantic cat tree that's taller than me. That's where his food and water and litter box is, but he, I'm pretty sure, is outside right now. <laughs> but, again, if the birds are outside of their cages, we are out here with them. Thank you. I'm sure you're exactly what everyone wants to hear. So I had to come back in the bedroom because I'm pretty sure you could not hear me over the zoo out there. Those are the ways that we keep the little fuzzy ferrets away from the birds because given the chance, the ferrets could seriously injure, if not kill the birds. And even though they've never shown signs of attacking another animal before, there are still people who actually feed their ferrets live animals for food and some people who will actually still do dead animals for food. It is something that we would actually like to try in the future. We've tried feeding them dead mice. Um, they were actually not interested yet. Um, but it is something that is deeply ingrained in their instinct. So given the opportunity, it is something that really could potentially happen. Hi. Now, the baby gate is important because we keep the dogs away from the birds. And again, I know my dogs very well. I've done a lot of training and I understand my dog's personalities and how to read dog behavior very well. My do it's for, for that reason why I trust the dogs wholeheartedly with our ferrets. Depending on the dog breed and actually more so the personality will depend on whether or not your dog may get along with your ferrets. Now, ferrets are predatory animals, which means they will eat other animals for food, or at least could eat other animals for food. But ferrets can actually also fall under the category as prey animals. It's one of the reasons why when we take these guys hiking and camping, we are always very vigilant on other animals and especially towards the sky because hawks and eagles will actually pick these guys up and eat them. So not only are they predators, but they're also prey. It's also why you should be very careful with your dogs and cats with ferrets. Somebody was really looking like he wanted to come out. Because even though my dogs get along very well with my ferrets, hi Celine, it does not mean all dogs will get along very well with ferrets. It is a personality thing and a training thing. Hi. <laughs> um, normally speaking, Border Collies, which Celine is, should have every instinct to want to herd and chase these little critters into a corner. Yes, I love you too. But either, I don't, I've never tried her on sheep, she just might not want to herd things, or she just, just really likes these things and don't compare them to sheep. <laughs> either way, I understand her temperament and I watch her behaviors very closely and I make sure the ferrets are never irritating to her and that she might get upset with them and snap. And right now she's just being very jealous and needy and wanting love. Hi. All right, keep back up. Do you lie down? Thank you. Stay. So baby gates are a very good choice for separating dogs from your animals as well. Cats, which are also predatory animals. A lot of people say cats and ferrets get along. My cat does not like our ferrets. He's never attacked our ferrets, but he runs away from our ferrets and does not have any interest in them whatsoever. So just because a lot of people say their cats get along with ferrets, I would not take their word for it and just put your cat with your ferrets either. 
Now, my advice when it comes to rabbits, guinea pigs, hamsters, mice, rats, and those type of actual prey type animals is I would never ever, or birds for that matter, like mine, I would never trust them around a ferret. Even if you've had your ferret around that animal, Celine, can you lie down? Around that animal for a very long time, and have had no problem. I've seen people where they're like, oh, my ferret and my bunny are such good friends. They love each other. They play. And then you end up reading a horrible story that my ferret attacked my bunny rabbit and I don't know why they were friends. Because in the end, these are predators and bunny rabbits are prey. And uh, there's only so much training you can do. Instinct will take over and they could end up attacking your beloved pet. So I would never ever recommend these being around uh, any of those type of animals or like chinchillas or any of those small type animals. These guys do definitely better with their own kind, right? I'm gonna put you back now. Now, baby gates are wonderful for separating dogs from other animals. Now, we separate our dogs from our birds, and it's again, it's not because I don't trust the dogs around the birds, because I have had my dogs around the birds. They don't attack the birds, they don't have any interest in eating the birds, but I've seen them play with the ferrets, and they can play very aggressively. If you've ever seen a dog do a play bow, it is a pretty hard move that they do on their front paws and if there is a bird there, they are very, very fragile creatures and you could easily crush them. It's one of the reasons why I still am a little careful with the ferrets because they do try to do play bows with the ferrets and the ferrets are usually pretty quick and move out of the way. The birds have no idea usually what's going on and it would not be good, so. That is why we usually keep our dogs away from the birds. Also, I personally have had family members, multiple family members, who've had dogs who've actually killed their pet birds. Dogs and birds usually should not intermingle. And it's not because, bless you, <laughs> and it's not because dogs don't necessarily get along with birds. Some things can happen to where um, for instance, the one family member had a dog who actually got along with the birds great. And they were, the birds were always loose, the dogs were always loose, and they were fine. Well, one day the bird got startled and flew to the floor, which happens all the time. Even if your birds don't have flight feathers, they, the only place they have to go then is to the floor. Well, the dog was sleeping and the bird happened to nibble on the dog and the dog just got startled and snapped. And what happened to be there, unfortunately, was the bird. And a quick snap, even just at the air with an animal or with the bird being there, ended up killing the bird. So I'm sure the dog actually didn't mean to kill the bird, but it obviously happened and was a mistake that they couldn't take back. So obviously they learned from that mistake not to have the dogs around the birds anymore, but that would be my recommendation, not to intermingle those two species, usually ever, if you can help it. So the only other concerns I would have with intermingling species would be their diets. Having this different kind of animals in the house, you are inevitably gonna have different types of food in the house that maybe they shouldn't be eating. For instance, my birds eat fruits and vegetables and occasionally seeds and nuts. And birds, by nature, are very messy creatures and throw it everywhere. So if we do decide to have the ferrets loose out in the kitchen area or the living room area, I always have to make sure that there is no splattered fruits and vegetables anywhere on the floor. Because, <laughs> what are you doing? Because ferrets should not eat fruits and vegetables. They are obligate carnivores, meaning they should be eating meat. And things high in sugar like fruits can be very bad for them. So I have to make sure stuff like that. Same thing, I have to make sure the birds aren't eating anything that the dogs can pick up because the dogs free roam most of the house all the time. So, thank you. Did you want to be on camera more than me? <laughs> you back up. <laughs> um, so I have to make sure the birds aren't eating anything that would be dangerous for the dogs in case they throw something on the floor I can't pick up quick enough. So grapes, which actually aren't super healthy for birds anyways because they're full of sugar, birds can eat them. I don't feed them to the birds because if they do throw them on the floor they're very bad for dogs and I might miss picking it up quickly and the dogs can eat them. So I have to be obviously very careful for that. So any of our food is stored very separately just to make sure none of the animals have accidental access to anyone else's food for that reason. So I hope that answers any questions you have if you're wondering if you can keep ferrets with another type of animal like another prey animal or any other type of species that you want to 
keep in the same household. Safety is just gonna be your number one concern and as long as you're super safe and very careful all the time, it is most definitely pos possible. So if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get notifications when we put out more videos, hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, now that I'm done with the video, Kitty Kitty Midnight decided to come in. I was trying to do a video. And you were going to be in the video. You're going to be in the after video? You're like, I'm too good for the video. Yeah. prince of the household. He doesn't care about nobody or nothing.